I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Odell probably but, um, told him I for was, branding. I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was surprised to see him do as well as he did because he was a guy that I had kind of been knocking, and I did not write very nice things about him during the Senior Bowl because he just in in practice and when I was watching him play, he had really bad hands. There were a lot of drop passes that were just kind of irritating to watch, and it was kind of like, why are you out here? Why can't you catch that? And why are you still not catching that? Um, but, yeah, I think they had a really good day today, and I think that he's showing people that he can, and it'll just be a matter of whoever takes them just proving it out on the field because as of right now, I think that he's become more of somebody who's, who was looked down upon that's now more of a question mark. Do you think he's kind of more in that Foster Monroe kind of category? Because, I mean, he was known as the blocking tight end. I don't think people knew he was as yeah. athletic. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that he could be because I know originally he was a wide receiver and they did make that move to transition him to tight end. And, I mean, there were so many really good guys in our receiving core that there's now the question of maybe he didn't get targets because of that because there's – that's the thing that people are kind of split on is that he did not get targets because of all the other immense talent. And he's just kind of a little bit above average or was he not getting targets because he has bad hands. Yeah. So just to wrap everything up, I just want to know for you, what's, what's your mountaintop? What's your ultimate goal is, are you trying to be a talent? Are you trying to be an investigator? Are you trying to, to, you know, be an owner work in sports? Like what, what's your ultimate goal? You know, that's kind of become foggy for me lately. I'd, yeah. I'd say the clear-cut thing, though, is I definitely want to be on air. I've done a lot of stuff on air sure. uh, broadcast-wise, but I don't want to lose the analytical aspect of it. I do not want to be on the 5 o'clock news during your two-minute <laughs> one down about people who are wearing CBU shirts and the fan reacted to this because that's not football, that's news. And there's a lot of people that end up in that. Um, so I, I would ideally like to be on the ESPN roundtable with people like Matt Hasselback, who's someone that gave me one of my first big interviews. I know that that's going to be hard to do because I'm literally competing with former NFL players that had great careers. Yeah. Um, another thing that I like doing, I like, I like boosting people. I like working with uh, quarterbacks ahead of the draft and telling their stories and I like the quarterback analysis that I do quite a bit. So I would say something with a, a at the national level that has to do with analysis that's on air, whatever yeah. that ends up being. That's that's awesome. I'm sure I'm sure you'll get there. So yeah. and 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 the the last question. Sorry, I said last question before, but yeah. Do you have fine. do you have any do you have any advice for all your your LSU classmates that you're slowly bodying? <laughs> Slowly, body? yeah. <laughs> um, basically, basically, just anybody trying to be like is, you, trying to break in. Yeah, just um, don't be lazy. There's a lot of people that say, "Oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I have this going on." I mean, there's been times that I've had three or four different gigs, and I have a dog. His name is Mettenboro. If you haven't seen that, I'm sure you can dissect where that comes from. Um, I travel a lot. I'm a full-time student, so I don't, I just, I don't buy the whole I'm busy thing. You can make time for it. It's going to take some sacrifices. And then, like I said earlier, just be aggressive, get your credential. And even if you're only working for student media, use it for everything that you can go on all the trips you can network with people, become a freelancer, uh, take those assignments for the local newspaper, just Stuff like that. I think that there's a lot more that people can do that they don't realize that they can do, and I think they should take more advantage of it. All right, awesome. So go ahead and plug your social channels, and we'll let you go. Yeah, so on Instagram, I'm just Chrissy Freud. My name is C-R-I-S-S-Y-F-R-O-Y-D because no one else can ever spell it right. Um, <laughs> I definitely misspelled Twitter it. It's just Chrissy underscore Freud, and that's pretty much the only two social media platforms that I operate uh, sports on. Awesome. All right, Chrissy, we'll get some rest. Thank you so much for, for being flexible with us and coming in and dropping your knowledge. Yeah. Um, it was really awesome. Wish you the best of luck, and I'm sure we'll do this again soon. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you. No worries. All right. Bye-bye. Whoops. <laughs> always I always, I, I'm always quick on the hang-up, but, yeah, shout-out to Chrissy, man. Started at fifteen, sixteen. That's, yeah, that's, just totally manifest, totally manifested everything. That's crazy. Like that's what I was saying. Like, 
Just to be a 16-year-old, 17-year-old credential? That's wild. And she went to community college and then just transferred to LSU. So she was even covering LSU before. Wait, she's a JUCO product? What? Yeah, she went to community college, too. So, See, I'm telling you, JUCO products, we take over the world. Yeah, man. So that was Chrissy. Shout out to her. Shout out to LSU. Shout out to the NFL Combine. On that note, what's the next topic? Because I didn't do the rundown for once this week. I barely got it like 10 minutes ago. Wait, was that supposed to be a shot? Cause I do the no, right. that was supposed to be your trigger to jump in and fill air. Because <laughs> I'm like, we, we skimmed over like a ton of actual like combine. Yeah, that was weird. Usually we don't talk that much football like in our interviews, but she was pretty dope. Like yeah. she's probably. Because like there's a lot we got to get to before we get to the football stuff that we were We can talk about the CBA. Let's talk about that and the recent development because we spent basically a whole entire show on that last week. So, for those of you who don't know, the NFLPA has, um, I believe, I don't know what the proper word is. I want to say either ratified or approved the CBA as is. So, what that means is the players' reps... um, we lost like voted. 17 to 14? Yes. No, it won 17 to 14. Oh, once, and then one person abstained to um, give everyone, every person in the body a vote. So so now the vote will go to all four, nearly 4,000 players. Um, it's been pretty much, I don't know, You you talk about it. Okay, so the players universally hated it. Like, they, they universally hate it. And player reps for certain teams, like Calais Campbell, he was one. Um, it was pretty much the same. He went on, like, a, a, a long to the thread about, like, look, this is now the perfect time for you to get involved in this and understand what's going on with this because it's more than just the little notes and fact sheets that they sent you. You need to get with your team rep and really understand what's going on with this clicks bargaining agreement. And then you have Aaron Rodgers who comes out and he, like a, a lot of other people, especially with Sherman, he's like, the 17th game should have never been on the table. We should never be uh, arguing about playing a 17th game and then now there's a cap on how much we might make on the 17th game when we don't want to play the 17th game. Like, Which they no took away, they took away the cap, but they would not rescind on the actual yeah seventeenth game. And Marquis Pouncey went off on IG. Like, you really need to go to just just watch the video. He pretty much stated some he, he him and the Martin the Pouncey twins they they're real ones. No matter what you think about their teams and how their careers have gone, they are some real ones. And he pretty much just said, you know, it's a joke. They just want to pass this deal through so they can say they got a deal done. But I want to look out for these younger guys because I love these younger guys. And pretty much called it a hoe-ass, bitch-ass deal. <laughs> um, but but, they weren't, the audio, but, but they weren't the only ones. There was also a lot um, uh, Aaron Rodgers was against it. He wanted revisions made to the offseason program. Uh, we already talked about Trip Sherman. Brown even said Talked it. about Fournette. But um, so somebody called into the Dan, not Dan Patrick, one of the other. Oh, Will Kane show. Sorry. Okay. Why just, are we mentioning that name? I just happened to be in the car and the station was on. I don't usually listen to him. But yeah, so a former player, I believe it was one of the backup running backs of the Cowboys. He essentially broke it down. Felix like, Jones? I don't remember who it was. But um, he essentially broke it down. The issue is, and and... Somebody else, and you can go into Petty Twitter and find this, but essentially Petty Twitter was saying, Petty you know, Twitter. you you know, the the media was essentially pushing this upon us, pushing it upon the players, making it look in favor because obviously they're connected with more within the organizations of the NFL players, who you know is giving them their sources and their reporting. But in addition to that, this dude called him the Will Kane Show and what, broke it down like this. He was like. A lot of times, like, your player rep doesn't even really know what's going on. Like, a lot of times, 
the people like most people don't want to go to meetings because they're usually at night they're usually after practice after a workout and nobody's trying to stay around and talk about you know negotiations or or player health or anything like that or managing your money or or you know not go out as much for two hours after a practice so only a handful of guys go and it's usually the lower tier players who are the guys who are getting a lot of lot more benefits this time around versus other times around and they don't necessarily care whether they get that extra two percent because you know they just want to get a contract like that hundred thousand five hundred thousand isn't is a lot to them they're not going to be getting bread off the merch. It's the big guys who want that that fifty percent because they know that there's still a lot more money that they can make beyond even whatever the the salary cap deems. So, further, what he said was the player reps. A lot of them are sometimes pawns in terms of like, okay, they're the the favorite player. They're the the franchise players. You know, boy, best friend on the team. And he's like, hey, you should do this, blah, blah, blah. It's a good opportunity. Or it's somebody who's, you know, a little bit bit more forward thinking in terms of like, okay, this is going to help me, you know, an extracurricular activity, something for the resume, something to do. And so they're just looking at it more as a position of power to better themselves versus, you know, hey, I represent my team. So that's the point that he was making is that even when these guys are voting, a lot of them aren't taking into consideration the entire 53, 75, 90, whatever roster. They're just, you know, there for their own vested interest. And so they just vote based off of that versus how it's supposed to be where you're essentially a representative and a leader for that group, which, again, goes to your point of why it's a weak union. And that's why Pouncey pretty much said, look, the issue with this is a lot of guys, he, he called out the veterans. He's like, veterans, if you honestly care about these younger guys because you were in their position, you should know this is a bad deal. He's like, any of my teammates or whatever, you hurting for money, come to me and my brother. We'll help you out. It's, we, we, he said, we making way more money than the old guys before us ever did. So there's no reason you should be going broke. If you need money or whatever, you come to us. We'll help you. And I think it's guys like that who don't necessarily either get that leadership role or want it, but there's some real ones. You look back when Muhammad Ali was blackballed in boxing, it was a lot of guys who did work for to help him and his family out behind the scenes, and you never heard their names. Joe Frazier, that whole park in the fight that was fabricated. I just Fighting think the park. this makes the players more disposable. Like I was, I was talking yeah, about talk. it. I'm oh, sorry, I was talking about it with my roommate a little bit. And to, I mean, it just seems like it's a win-win for the the NFL organization itself and the owners. Like I know you guys brace like graze upon this, but I'm just saying, like, um, like you're saying about the younger players and them wanting to be hungry. I feel like them adding the the games and all the other stuff. Either way, they can the 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 best players at at risk for injury, and then they're easily able to entice these um, players who are trying to get you know play and get a contract to enter those spots, and then you know kind of this whole gruesome cycle of pushing these players to do more, and also kind of like giving yeah. that I, I don't know that analogy, but like. Uh, kind of taking that, uh, like blind greed. I don't know how to explain it, but like you're just taking it because you see the money. But it's like, yo, you're you're basically you're disposable. not thinking long term, yeah. right? Right. You're, you're never trying to. Yeah, you're not trying to think long term. You're just getting pushed without pushing back. Right. You know, right. you're 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 being you're being moved to do more without. You're you're being pushed to do more than you're willing to do, mm-hmm. and they're pushing themselves as much as they want to go. So, like, yeah, they're going a little bit further to get you to go further. But at the end of the day, why do they get to determine how far right. they go? Yeah. When mm-hmm. you're the the union, you're the labor force, mm-hmm. you're the foundation, you're the, everything. So I see what you're saying. But, um, yeah, final notes on the CBA. 
pretty much what it comes down to is, and you can compare this to anybody who's ever had a job and had to deal with complaints on the job, or let's say 